Well, it's so good to see you all at church here tonight. And again, uh, I'd like to also extend a warm welcome to those who are joining us online as well. Now, you might be wondering, why is Alex up here so early? Well, tonight we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. You might be wondering, where's the discussion question? We're not ready for a Bible talk yet. You are. You absolutely are. Our discussion question and our Bible reading is actually going to be happening in the middle of our talk today. So we're switching things up a little bit. Um, and tonight's topic, as, uh, as, as Jeffy mentioned, is actually a continuing on from Jason's talk last week. So does anybody remember what Jason was talking about last week? What was his big theme or big topic? Great memory, everybody. It starts with P and is a name for a mayonnaise. Yeah, praise, creamy, no. He was talking about praise, which is another way of saying that uh, giving thanks to God as well. And we were focusing on Psalm 106, which is talking about how it is good and right to give thanks to God. But guess what? I'm going to talk about, as Jeffy said, I'm going to outline tonight a problem. In that, there is something that actually stands in the way of giving God his rightful thanks and promise uh, and praise as well. But I'm not going to leave us there. As Jeffy said, uh, I'm also going to talk tonight about how God solves this problem as well. So it's a good news message tonight, as long as you stay with us all the way through to the end. Please don't leave halfway thinking, oh my goodness, we can't do anything about it. But... Before I start, let's pray that uh, we would all hear what God will be teaching us tonight as we gather together this evening. How about I pray for us? Yeah, Heavenly Father, thank you uh, yeah, that your ways are so much higher than our ways. Uh, your thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. But yet, uh, you would still give us the gift of your word so that we can read it and hear your voice as well. So God, so uh, with whatever this week has brought us, we thank you that you have brought us here tonight safely as well. So we pray that now we would open up not just our ears, uh, but also our hearts to what you would teach us today through your word. So as a result of our gathering together, uh, that we would know you better and we would love you more. And in Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen. Okay, let me start off by first telling you a story. Imagine that we've all gone back in time around about 200 years or so. So we're in about 1800s. It's the middle of a cold, snowy winter, kind of like now, but we've got snow. And there are a group of soldiers who are on the move. Now, these army soldiers actually all come from the same village. So all of the fighting men all fighting together in one group. And in desperate times of war, the only way that the soldiers could ensure the safety of their families whilst they were away fighting was to actually bring everybody along with them. So we don't just have a group of army soldiers, we've got a whole entire village traveling together. <clears throat> Everything and everyone that they needed, uh, they packed up and they traveled together with, including a tent where they kept the food for all of the camp as well. Now, one day, the second in charge of the, of the army reports to the army leader that someone has been stealing food from the food tent. Now, this is a bad thing because food is often very scarce or very hard to come by during times of war. And there wouldn't be enough for everybody if things were being stolen because they would give everybody a certain amount and then those amounts would just get smaller and smaller. And in winter very easy to then die from starvation if there isn't enough food in people's bellies. So the leader was absolutely furious and he gathered all the people together, all right, the soldiers and the villagers alike. And he made this announcement to everybody. He says this, he says, anybody, anybody that we catch who has been stealing the food will be publicly whipped. A few days pass and the second in charge reports back to the army leader. He says, sir, I have some good news and I have some bad news for you. The army leader then asks for, well, what would you ask for first? Thank you. The army leader asks for, the, thank you, Lieutenant Gaurav, that was very good. The army leader asks for the good news first and the soldier reports back. The good news, sir, is that we have caught the person stealing the food. Excellent, the army leader thinks. We can make an example in front of everybody uh, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And this is, again, for the sake of the survival of our entire village. What do we ask for next? Thank you. The army leader then asks for the bad news. And the second in charge says in a soft, slow voice, 
The person who's been caught stealing the food is your mother. Did you guys feel that? A ripple across the room? The army leader is in shock, and now he has a very big problem that he must face. Now, on one hand, he absolutely loves his mother and does not want to whip her, just like all good sons and daughters should. And here's the thing, she's old. A severe whipping at her old age, and she might even die from her injuries. That's how big this is. But on the other hand, this is the army leader who's made this announcement just the night before to the whole village that anyone, anyone without exception, must be punished for this crime. If he makes an exception for his mother, it's a very risky thing for him to do because he runs the risk of his soldiers seeing him as a leader who cannot be trusted. And he also runs the risk of the villagers not seeing him as a man of his word, not worthy to lead them. He then sends the second in charge soldier away from his tent to give himself some time to think. And then whispers happen and the news travels around the camp and then everybody goes to sleep that night very uneasy, wondering what's going to happen next. Well, everyone, except for the army leader, who tosses and turns all night, wondering about what it is that he should do. The sun rises over the hill, signalling a new and very important day in the life of the village. The villagers and the soldiers are all gathered together, and they see in the distance the army leader's mother, and her wrists tied to a whipping post. They also see a soldier holding a whip in his hands, waiting for the command. And finally, they see the army leader standing close by, feeling just as helpless as they all are. The soldier raises the whip above his head, when all of a sudden the army leader yells out in a loud voice, Stop! The crowd starts whispering amongst themselves. I knew he couldn't do it. How are we going to trust him to lead us now? He's not going to whip his mum, surely. But all the whispers stop when they see what happens next. The army leader steps in front of his mother, takes the shirt off his own back, and holds her tight. He looks over his shoulder to the man with the whip and commands him, Whip me instead. I will take the punishment in her place. The soldier nods and whips the leader. And with each whip that rings out, a cry rings out from the army leader's mouth. And with every whip, he holds and hugs his mother tighter and tighter. The crowd and the soldiers see this army leader for who he truly is. This is a man of his word. This is a man who can be trusted to show both his love for his mother and his sense of justice for the sake of his people. Now church, how would you feel if someone did this for you? If someone took the punishment in your place. I want you to, you've done a very good job in imagining this story for now, and now I want you to do a little bit more imagining. Imagine that you're in the place of the mother in the story. I want you to discuss in groups around you now. Here's our discussion time. Discuss in groups all the different emotions that you may or may not be feeling, being the guilty one, and having someone take this punishment in your place. We'll allow a little bit of time to do this now, uh, and then later on what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around with uh, the microphone and get you guys to share so that the people online can also join in our discussion as well. Okay, so here's our discussion time. Get yourselves into little groups. Think about all the different emotions uh, that you might be feeling, uh, and we'll come back uh, and continue our discussion uh, in a little while. All right, how's everybody going? Have we had time to discuss? Time to talk through all the different feelings and emotions? Okay, all right. 
Are there any brave people who would like to share how they would feel if someone took the punishment in their place? Brenda. Yes. Thank you, Brenda. Oh, dear. I would say the right thing. Well, this was good. We did a role play. <clears throat> I'm old, so I'm the mother. You know, I've... Well, we, ha we haven't got there yet. <clears throat> I'm the mother. This darling over here, she's the son. And he's saying, I can't... You know, my mum was only buying food to feed her village. But that's the rule. You steal food. That's the punishment. <clears throat> I told her I was just being kind. She says, yeah, kind, but naughty. <laughs> because I was doing the wrong thing, legally. So she, in the end, he, in the end, says, I will take your punishment for you. So I'm the mother. What do I want to happen? No way would I want my son to take my punishment to be killed instead of me? No way. How could you love your children? How could you let your son die in your place, especially when you're old and you're going to heaven soon anyway? But, you know, <laughs> so that's what we thought, wasn't it? Yes. And you agreed. Yes. Yeah, Claire agreed. Yeah, absolutely. No way. No way. And we'd also have any different... Feelings? You don't have to worry about right or wrong, but there's no right or wrong in this at all. So. Ethan. Thank you. I don't know why I whispered your name. Alex. Okay. <laughs> we were saying something similar to Brenda, like confusing. And I think a good word is wonder. It's like, why? Why would you do this? Because I did the wrong thing and I deserve to be punished. So why? Yeah, but that's a big sacrifice. It's like, why? Why would you do that? You know? You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's right. Like sometimes, sometimes it might actually bring up more questions than answers as well. It's like, how would you feel like, why would you do this as well? Yeah. Anybody else? Two more. Yes. Of course. She's closer. It makes it easier. Because <laughs> um, I'm a mom. And I was saying the shame, you know, that the mom would feel the shame. And in as much as the whip did not touch the mom, with every cry of the son, she felt it. Mm. Yeah, it's like... I think uh, it's very easy uh, for shame to be a driving force, especially, I, I, I think I'm happy to say this, especially in um, like Eastern culture or just non-Western culture as well. Like an honor shame is a very much a, a high-valued thing, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. So we talked about like there could have been a, a bunch of reasons why she did it. No, maybe even good reasons like helping somebody else out. But regardless... I think when it happened, um, the shame part, but just overwhelming guilt and just feeling wretched. And Haley said embarrassed. <laughs> so. Yeah. Guilt, shame, embarrassment. There's often lots of different feelings that can crop up, isn't there? Yeah. So thanks so much for sharing your thoughts. And again, like like like, I, I wanna I want to emphasize that there are no right or wrong answers here because we're putting you into the shoes uh, of uh, a guilty person. Um, their 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 reaction, your reaction, is valid and right as well. And I think you've all done really well in covering what I personally think would be some very typical responses uh, to such an amazing, crazy action, isn't there? Now, I'm, I'm quite surprised some of this wasn't actually touched on, but I, I think there might be some people who might be actually feeling really, really grateful and thankful that someone would do this for them. Now, a lot of these things, some might feel as though they should be the ones who take the punishment because it was their crime, right? It's, it's, this is, and and instead, of, instead of maybe like shame or embarrassment, there might be like a, 
uh, a driving force of like pride and it's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to take responsibility for my own actions. That, that could be a right feeling as well. And others might think that maybe the punishment doesn't fit the crime at all. It seems way too harsh for someone who, again, we don't know why the mother was stealing. It could have been, like Brenda said, in order to then give it to others. You know, It just doesn't seem fair. And as Ethan did, some of you might then ask a question of me as well, ask another question. You're like, Alex, is this a true story? Well, just like the question that I gave back to you guys in discussing, the answer is actually probably a little bit of a mix. Now, as far as I know, this story didn't take place in recorded history. So in one way, no, this isn't a true story. But in another way, just as I asked you to imagine yourselves in place of the army leader's mother, that's actually not too far from the truth. So in another way, yes. Many parts of this story are actually indeed all of our story. Let me explain. The mother is doing what she thinks she should do in order to survive. So let's say that she's actually taking the food because she feels as though she's going hungry. But her actions in stealing the food communicate a little bit more than that, or in some cases a lot more. There's a, there's a saying in English where it says that actions speak louder than... Thank you. <laughs> Like, what's the, yeah, words. What's the word? Words. So what could the mother have been communicating to everybody else with her action, even if in her eyes she thinks it's the right one to do? She might be saying that she doesn't trust the leader, that she, along with everybody else, will be provided for. And probably without knowing it, that her actions when it comes to looking after herself will actually have a negative effect on everybody else around her in that everybody else will then go a little bit more hungry. By putting ourselves in place of the mother in the story, we can see that sometimes we're also guilty of taking control, not trusting that we will be provided for and that our actions whether we know it or not, they might actually negatively affect those that we know and love around us. Only we're not just doing this to someone who's like an army leader and like a son in this story. This is actually a symbol of our attitudes and actions uh, towards God. The very same God that Jason reminded us last week, who is the one who is worthy of all of our thanks and our praise. The result of our selfish attitudes and actions towards God result in something much worse than just a public whipping. Here's the Bible verse. I'm only going to do one. The Bible verse that we're looking at tonight. And this is how it begins. The result of our sin, the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says. What's a wage? A wage is something that you get for the work that you have done. So a wage for a completed shift at, say, for example, uh, Emporium Cafe in Fig Tree, which is where Ayano works, and I haven't visited yet, but I will. But that she'll get her paycheck, all right? A week, a, a day, a week of work, wherever it is, please go visit Ayano at Emporium Cafe. <laughs> but you get, you get your paycheck. That, that's what you get for the work that you've done, yeah? But we're all guilty of committing sin as well, which is what the Bible calls not just the things that we say or do that we think that are against God, but in our very attitude in rejecting God as our king and our saviour and also our provider as well. So we've all done this. And what do we get for it? We get nothing less than death. Or in other words, eternal separation from the very God that we've rejected in the first place the one that we've rejected in this life and as a result in the life to come as well, in eternal life. It's God saying, you don't want me? Okay, I'm going to give you what you want. That's what this death means, being separated from God. We're getting exactly what it is that we deserve, but God isn't. 
the one whose very essence is love receives pretty much the opposite of love in return. Hatred, rejection, I'm going to live life my own way. No thanks, Father. But this is where God is just so different, where he is so much higher and beyond who we are as sinful and broken human beings. As much as it is that we reject God, God's arms are always open and ready to receive us back. This is the stick with me till the end part of, this, of the message tonight. This is the good news. This is only the first part of our verse tonight. This is how the rest of it goes. The result of our sin is death. But the solution. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Like the army leader, God offers himself as a solution to the worldwide problem of sin. On the one hand, God loves us, his children, and does not want to punish us. But on the other hand, God is also a God of justice, and there must be consequences for sin or else the world will be thrown into chaos, even more chaos than it already is today. God solves this problem by sending his son Jesus, his very own son, Jesus, to live the life that none of us could live, a sinless and a perfect life, but then to die the very death that we all deserve, this death, taking all of our sin upon his shoulders and taking our place on the cross. This Jesus, this and what he has done, this is the free gift that God gives us now and forever as well. Is this amazing news? It's absolutely amazing news. In fact, I think it's so good that we need to actually hear it many, many times over to remind us of God's love for us as his children from all different nations and peoples and languages. Now, I've, I'm going to be honest, I copied this slide from Jason's last week. And I think... <laughs> I think I've then put all of my verses into all the other languages because I don't really read or speak any of them. If one of these in your heart language is the wrong verse, please read out the right one instead. <laughs> but what we'd like you to do now, it's pretty, it's pretty small, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come around with the microphone. So I'm not going to invite you up here, but we'd love to just hear this beautiful truth. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I'd love us to hear this in all of these different languages and be reminded um, of God's goodness. Now, Parissa, I did Farsi especially for you. Is that correct? It is? Okay, awesome. Thank you. All right. Okay, who is going to read our Malayalam for us today? Amazing Grace? Yes. Pabatinda Shambla Marana Matre, David in the Kruba Maramo, Namude Karta by Christo Ishul Niti Jivendane. So good. How good is that? All right, what's next? Chinese. Dane, Larry, Christopher, any of you? Yes, go Larry. You may treat the Daja Jurus Swang, or Sandy Jeter to Yesu Jidu Sisha Li Wu, so she young son. Three gifts to Chinese people as well. Hindi? We've got our usual suspects. Thank you, Gaurav. Yeah. Thank you, Lieutenant Gaurav. Yes. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is the same as the Holy Spirit, when we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. So good. All right. Japanese, Ayana, who works at Emporium Fig Tree as well. Yes. So good. All right. And Parissa, again, a welcome back from last week, but this week you get to read the Bible in Farsi as well, your heart language, please. Thank you. 
زیرا هر که گناه کند تنها دستمزدی که خواهد یافت مرگ است اما هر که به خداوند ما عیسی مسیح ایمان آورد پاداش او از خدا زندگی جاویده simple isn't it such a simple and beautiful truth i love that so much so god is offering all of us chinese speakers malayalam speakers farsi speakers japanese speakers english speakers too <laughs> imagine that god is offering all of us this free gift of eternal life in jesus and this is not just like a gift that we might receive once a year on our birthdays what this gift is is an is a life with god that starts now and goes on forever and all of us are at different points in our journeys with jesus i'll acknowledge that for some you might be hearing about this problem of sin for the very first time and tonight could be the night that you realize that you need to be saved from the consequences of your actions and your attitude towards god if this is you can i encourage you take and be thankful for the gift of jesus now there are others among us who've walked with jesus for a really long time but then acknowledge that there might be some seasons or times in our lives where we might be guilty of taking matters into our own hands and not really fully trusting god to provide for us can i also encourage you tonight take and be thankful for the gift of jesus and if there are others here who are kind of so just figuring all of this out who is jesus who is god what is this all about can i encourage you to keep asking questions to those of us here at church and also to god he hears your questions and if you don't mind if this is you i'll be praying that you too one day can take and be thankful for the gift of jesus now we're going to respond uh with singing a song called this i believe and a line that keeps repeating over and over is i believe in the name of jesus we here at kirriville church do believe in not just the name of jesus but what it is that he has done for us on the cross taking the punishment that we all deserved dying the death and defeating it as well jesus has solved the problem of our sin by giving his very life defeating death so that we might live forever with him and this life starts from the very moment that we take that gift and we follow him let today be the first day for some of us and for the rest of us let today be a new day of the rest of our lives following after the problem solver the provider the one who is the gift none other than jesus let's pray dear heavenly father we thank you that you are a god of great love but you are also a god who is just and fair that punishment for sin needs to take place but that you would offer yourself in the person of jesus to take our place and die for us and pray that today and every day that all of us here no matter where we are in our journeys can indeed take and be thankful for the gift of Jesus. We're sorry for living lives our own way. We're sorry for rejecting you. We thank you that you are a God whose arms are always open to welcome us back as well. Yeah, we just want to rest in the safety uh, of your embrace and in your arms as well. and we just as jason reminded us last we give you all of the thanks and praise in jesus name amen